Alright guys, it is 11.56 and it's time for wasted lunch. A little bit early today. Uh, as you can see, this is my lovely wife Teresa here. And I brought her on because I played a game the other day for the first time. Got this game for like a buck and a half at a thrift store, I think. For a buck and a half. And had it sitting around, sitting around, sitting around, did not play it for the longest time. Finally played it the other day. And this game is, it's a card game, and it's called Love Letter. Alright, let's see what it say. Court the Royal Princess of Tempest. Um, the premise behind this game is that the queen has been imprisoned and her daughter is distraught so all of a sudden there's a bunch of dudes who decide in order to pep the daughter up they're going to try and win her affection and eventually get married to her to me there sounds like they're just taking advantage of her grief trying to get hooked up with her what do you think uh, so, the, with that story, as a player, <clears throat> and since the game is called Love Letter, the idea is that you are trying to get a love letter to the princess and win her affection, okay? And there are only 16 cards in this card game. Not a whole hell of a lot of cards for a card game. But uh, the idea is that by the end of the round, once all the cards are gone, okay, you draw cards from the short deck. <clears throat> and by the end of the round, if you have the highest powered card, your, okay, your letter makes its way to the princess. And... The cards themselves, each one of these cards, they're all different characters, right? I think my wife might be a little camera shy here. <laughs> Never been on camera, really. Uh, except for that time you stole the intro to my show, right? But uh, there are all different characters. On these cards each one is a different character like there's a guard card there's a um, there's a priest card there's a baron card there's the princess card herself which is the highest powered card of all so if you end the round you got the princess doesn't matter what somebody else has you're gonna win uh, a token of her affection and, you know, maybe it'd be more comfortable if you kind of looked over here at me and we just, you know, converse a little bit, honey. Um, wouldn't that be easier? She's, uh, I guess what you call freezing there. Come on. Uh, very easy. You're on here, you are on here to talk about this game a little bit with me. Um, 16 game cards, comes with little reference cards to make it easy. How we doing, Valerie? Hope you're doing swanky. Good to see you. This is Teresa, my lovely wife. Uh, she's never really been on here. She stole the intro to my show one time. She did, you did fine with that. So, you should be comfortable. Um, we're talking about a game called Love Letter. It's a little card game. Got it for a buck and a half. And I never played it until the other day. What's, each one of these cards is somebody who has some kind of relationship with the princess. Okay. And as it is in life, different people are closely, are closer to the princess. 
And so by the end of the round, once all the uh, cards are used up, if you have <coughs> the closest person to the princess, you win a token of her affection. Now, uh, when you play through the deck once, that's considered a round. And depending on how many people are playing the game, okay, that that is what decides how many tokens of affection a person has to win to actually win it. Let's see, slowly getting better. Hi, Teresa. Teresa's a little camera shy. That's why she's just kind of frozen there. I'm going to try and use some antifreeze in her to try and loosen her up here. Try tickling. I'm trying the tickle method. Oh, Tina's on here. How are we doing? Hello. Oh, my cousin Michelle. How are we doing? This, this is my wife, Teresa, if you guys haven't met her. But uh, anyways, what's cool about this game is it's very easy to learn. There's not a whole hell of a lot of anything you got to learn. Yes, there is an instruction booklet, but it's very short. In fact, a lot of the instruction booklet is about the story behind the game. Okay, this story that's taking place with this princess that you're trying to win the affection of. And, but the game is very easy to learn. I read through the booklet uh, twice very quickly because it's only really, this is a little booklet right here. And, yeah, that might seem like a lot of pages, but a lot of the pages explain, see who these characters are. And these characters are on the cards. And what's cool is, each of these characters has a different power, okay? And how the game is played is, everybody starts with one card, okay? And then... So it goes around again, everybody picks up a second card. Okay, now you have two cards in your hand, but you're only allowed to keep one card. So you have to choose which one of those cards you keep and which one you lay down. Now when you lay down a card, its power ends up being applied. Okay, like, uh, let me get the little cheat sheet out here. Let me get a lot quicker to explain these powers to you. The guard, okay, the guard only has a strength, only has a closeness to the princess of uh, how many points? One point? One point, honey? Um, and, but the guard has a power. When you lay it down, you can guess another player's hand, okay? So if Teresa and I are playing and I lay my guard card down, let's see what card this is. Oh, no, that's a king one. And I lay down the guard card. And I decide to keep the other card I have, which I don't let her know about. If I lay down the guard card and I say, Teresa, I believe you have the princess card. And you have the princess card, what do you got to do? I have to lay it down. Being a little, little stage fright, <laughs> I think, guys. I have to lay it down, and I I'm out of the round. Yeah, she's got to lay that card down. She's out of the round, period. Now, when you lay down a card, okay, when you discard the card, you put it in front of you, and when you discard another card, you put that in front of you, and you lay them down in order to where they're exposed, where everybody can see what cards you laid down. Because, because... And I know this is backwards vision, guys. On each card, all right, I know this is backwards vision, but here's here's a king card. And this point, this number up here is the power of that card, the level of closeness to the princess herself, okay? So six would be about above average. Well, the princess herself is what? Eight. Eight. She's an eight. And she's the highest card there is. So six is pretty good. I mean, it's the king. Um, but yeah, each each one of these cards, when you lay them down, they have a different power. So the power of the king card is when I lay down the king card. Oh, this is what I was going to explain, guys. 
you have this, that's the power, and then a little tiny star, or stars, okay? That one star on the king means there's only one king card here, guys, okay? And that's important when you're playing the game because you're counting cards, all right? You are counting other people's cards because you want to try to guess what cards they have because each of these cards has different powers. You may... If you suspect somebody has a powerful card, you may want to play this king card because the king card is trade hands with another player of your choice. So if you strong, if I strongly suspected that Teresa had the princess, okay, which is a heck of a lot better than the king, I'm going to play the king card. I'm going to lay it down, and she's going to have trade cards with me, period. And... So, you count cards, and, you know, it's not like poker or something like that kind of card counting, because all these cards, self-explanatory. You got a little star saying how many others, how many copies of this card are out there. So, the king card is only one of. I know if I got the king, nobody else has a king card. Just like the princess card, there's only one of her. And a little cheat sheet. These are cool, too. Little cheat sheet. Okay. Basically got all the all the rules and crap boiled down right there. And it's got a list of the cards that are there, their powers, um, how powerful they are, and how many there are of each one of these cards. So it makes it very easy, very easy to play. Very easy to catch on. You know, yeah, here's a guard card. The artwork's good on these cards, too. I mean, oh, that's upside down. That's another guard. Oh, my gosh, all the guards are together, dang it. Here we go. Here's a handmaid. Now, her power is, what's her power, honey? She protects you. So if you have the handmaid and you lay her down, nobody can do anything to you. They can't ask you to show, you know if you have anything they can't make you switch cards with them there's nothing that they can do to you when you have the handmaid but she is only good for one turn so when you know if you get her and lay her down then you've got a couple other people playing once it comes back to you that's it you're no longer protected but she's a good card because you know uh, Paul has a guard card and wants to know if I have the princess. He can't, he can, he's still got a discard, but he can't ask me. I mean, because I don't have to tell him because, because I'm protected. Because the handmaid's laid down. Yes, if you have a king and you lay it down, I don't have to switch. And she protects me, and there's two of those cards. And you mentioning that about the handmaid card is a whole nother reason why when you lay down the cards you lay them down to where they're in sequence <clears throat> because if you use a handmaid card and then you okay come around to the next uh turn your next turn well when you lay down the next card after the handmaid you need to sort of cover her up some to where you know she's not to where your opponents know she's not in effect anymore yeah you know what i mean but I'm going to explain that to them. That sort That's another like that. reason why you lay them down. But you lay them down in a way that, you know, I you lay my cards down to where Teresa can still see them. Okay. But she knows what sequence I laid them see, down. See, usually it would look like something like this if you're laying down your cards. You could do something like that or you could yeah. do something like this. But usually I do it, you know, where it's like... Uh, I think that's how I down. do it, too. Yeah, so. But uh -huh. everybody can see what cards you laid. But you get lost in the battle of trying to get the princess, the letter to the princess. And once you have gotten that letter, you get a little red token. Yeah, yeah you gotta get little that red closer. Token. It's so little. And that's a token of affection there. Yes. That's what you're wanting. Yes. And folks, this is a fun game to play with your kids. But remember, everybody is out for blood. Oh, yeah. 
No, you know, it starts out, oh, we're having a great time, mm -hmm. and then they're left and right, you're getting knocked out, or you're going for the jugular. You know, like, there is a card in here that... There's a couple okay. of kind of nasty cards. See, here's a priest. Okay, a priest. What he does is you get to look at, say, I say, Paul, may I see your hand? I get to see his hand. Nobody else does, Secretly, yeah. but I do. Well... He shows me his hand. He's got the princess or any other card. My next turn, if I have a guard card, which is evil because I know what he has, I say, Paul, do you have the princess? And mm -hmm. he's got to lay it down. Yep. And then he's knocked out of that round. Yeah. So that's what you're getting closer to getting that little red token of the princess's affection. Yeah. And whoever wins the game ends up marrying the princess. And as the instructions say, uh, you have to play a card, and sometimes you're going to have to play a card whether or not you even like to, want to, because you might end up having two of the same card. One of those cards that I don't like, it's an ugly card, I believe is the Baron card. Okay, check out its power. Can pair hands with somebody else, and the lower hand is out. Yeah. Now, if you don't have any idea as to what your opponent's hand is, okay, and you have a mediocre ranking card, and you have two Baron cards, you've got to play one of those, whether you want to or not. Mm -hmm. And you can pair cards. And if you're the one with the lower card, you're out. Yeah. Period. You're out of that round. So you're not winning that token of affection. No, this round. um you know, this can go any way. Like like if you have the princess card, you, you get the princess card and you're like, Whoa, yeah, I got the princess card. Okay. Yeah. But the problem with the princess is like you know, you might, oh, well, you want to use another card in somebody else. And if you lay her down, you're automatically out. If you discard yes. the princess, you're you, out of that Yeah, route. if you discard her, you're You done. know, so you want to hold on to her and be weary of the trading cards. Card, the king. Okay. But if you get a good card, you always got to use it. Yeah. Because you don't want to get rid of... Her. Right. Isn't She's she, the top dog. Isn't she lovely? She is pretty. Let's see. What What is her... And all her card says is, if you discard this card, you are out of the round. Period. So okay. we, we want to keep the princess. Yeah. And when you play with 10-year-olds and 13-year-olds, um, the younger they are, the more out for blood. They will knock you yes. out. Um... When we played this game the other day, we played with my daughter, Jillian, and her stepsister, Michaela, and it was Paul and I, and Michaela won the game, but she was ruthless. Oh, yeah. She, you know, I mean, Definitely. she actually ended up getting a sledgehammer out of the garage. I mean, she was yeah. ruthless. It was pretty nasty. Yeah. But, uh... But a lot of fun. Yeah. So, easy to learn game love letter and See, cost me a buck and a half here because i'm hiding behind the oh messages. yeah <laughs> yeah there you go buck and a half it cost me at a thrift store and but, if you get a brand new it's like 11 bucks yeah but um in my opinion it's worth the 11 bucks and there's expansion packs too yeah. or premium packs um, but yeah, it's it's worth the money because it is a lot of fun. You can play up to two to four players. When you play with four players, that was a lot because we started with three. Yeah. And then and added. my daughter jumped in, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, because there's only so many cards, so you only go around so many times. Yeah. And then, you know, when oh, you want to go to the la last card, whoever gets the last card out of the deck. Yeah. Okay. What? I'm what leaving that to you. What do you mean? When you get to the last round? When you card, have the, the round. Yeah. 
that person picks it up, they have to play the card, and then you, if you, everybody's and still in everybody it, you got to compare your cards. lay down the cards, and then whoever has, has the most the, powerful one. The highest numbered card. Meaning closest to the princess. Yes. Which even the princess herself is in this story. You're like, well, wait, hold up. Closest to the princess, but there's a princess card. Uh, in the story, the princess can carry the letter, can get the letter herself, but if she's confronted, she gets scared and tosses the letter in the fire. Yes. That's how it translates. See, these the people are like our runners, gophers. We are giving these people the letter to the princess. Don't them. So, you know, I did not win the princess's heart. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, real quick, I'll just run over the t titles of the cards. You got a princess, a countess, king, prince, handmaid, baron, priest, guard. Okay? And the princess, you lose if it's discarded. The countess, there's only one of her, like the princess, discard if caught with the king or prince. So king, she's kind of a hussy in the game. Yeah. She's she's uh fooling around with the king or the yeah, prince. Yeah, gossip hound too, according to the story. Yeah. The king, you trade hands with somebody. The prince, one player discards his or her hand. That's they, a dirty one. There yes, too. because I, I had the princess and I had to discard her. Yeah. Now they get to pick up another card. Okay. When that happens. Right. But if you pull the prince on somebody, you choose somebody, and they got to lay down what's in their hand. And pick up a fresh card. Mm -hmm. So you could help or hurt them. Mm -hmm. But if you know what they got. And you know it's a powerful card. You want to get and, rid of and them. And you want to be dirty. You lay that down. And then they can't keep their card. No. And the handmaid. We talked about her. Oh the prince. There's two of him. The handmaid. There's two of her. And she's the one that Teresa was talking about. Protects you. Until your next turn. Nobody can do shit to you. They can't apply any of the powers of their cards on you while she's laid down until your next turn. Then there's a Baron. There are two of him. He, he's the guy where you can pair hands and the, with another player in the lower hand is out of the round. Then there's a priest. There's two of him. And since he's a priest, it's kind of like you're confessing to the priest. You have to show him your hand secretly. And then there's a guard, which are, are a poop load of guards, well, considering it's a 16 card deck. There are five of him, and he's the one where you get to guess a player's hand, and if you guess them right, they're out of the round. And you can't guess, because there is five, and I've been stuck with the guard a lot, especially yeah. at the end of the rounds, and a, a guard is worth one. Yeah, so yeah. So they kind of stink. Yeah. Their power is kind of cool, especially if you know what that other person has. Yeah. But they kind of stink at the same time. But you cannot get, now, you can they say. They really stink to have in the beginning. Yes. Because you have no idea what anybody has. Exactly. But the thing about them is, if, you know, there's five of them, so obviously somebody else might have a guard, but you can't guess the guard. No. It you, has to no. be a non-guard no, I can't card. say, Teresa, you got a guard card. Yeah. It's got to be a different different type of card yes and which yeah you know really i wouldn't want to guess a guard card out of somebody's hand anyways because it's so low of power but you still knock them out that's the yeah. whole point getting yeah. that person out of the round because when you get knock people yeah, out yeah you're right you're right because they get knocked out of the round yeah, you're right you but guess, you're not allowed to guess a guard card no out, so because that's that's just, that would be too easy you know but the thing of it is, the whole point of it is, is you know, you somebody's gonna win that round, but it you get have a better chance when you knock people out, because then you have more cards. It's just between two or three, and you have more cards in that pile to go back and forth, and you have a better chance of getting the broad's affection. Am I right? Yeah. So oh, yeah. yeah, but when you get right knocked out the first round. That does not feel good. Or no. the first card you go around. Yeah, and that happens. Yes, that happens. I, I've I been mean, knocked out. it can out. happen easily. Yes. I was the, I believe I was the one with the least tokens of affection in the last How many game. did you get? Two. 
Okay, I had three. So and with how many people we have, we have four, four people playing. So the first person with four mm -hmm. tokens of affection wins. Yeah. So my husband, uh, Paul, Jillian, and Michaela all had three. So it was a battle for blood. I, I was, was neck just, and neck. But you know what? Yeah. For some reason, there's a very bad chemistry going on with you and Michaela in that game. Very. Very competitive between you two personally. It was. It was. Ugly. It was. Hey, I threw a shoe at her. Well, it happens. Shit happens. Have you ever played Aggravation? Shit flies through that game all the time. Yeah, that's true. Oh gosh. You know? Well, that name is aptly. Or that game is aptly named. So the game. So four out of five. Zero. I would give this a crap. five, and it's fun for the whole family. Yeah. Because at first you're like, oh yeah, princess, blah 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 blah. Yeah. Because I didn't want to play at first, but Paul put the puppy dog face on, so I'm like, okay, I'll play one round. Yeah. Then one round led into two rounds, then three rounds, and four rounds until someone won. Yeah. So. It was a lot of fun, and I'm glad I played. I'd give it a five. You know, you can play it, you know, with one other person or two other people. You can have four people in the game. And it can get ugly. And how, that's the fun thing. How long do you think it took us to play? We played, I want to say, probably a little over an hour. You think so? Yes. Really? But because I, it, I think... I'm sorry. I was going to say, I think it would go faster next time around. What do you think? No. You think it would go faster I, with no, less I, people? Maybe with less people because you only got two people. Well, the more, the, if you only have two people, you got to get five or seven or something, five tokens of affection. Yeah. If, you know, four people, yeah. it's four tokens. But maybe with less people, it'll go faster. Maybe. You know, the back of the box... I got to straighten this up. It's upside down. That bugs me. Uh, back of the box says age 14 and up. Yeah, don't listen to that. No, it doesn't make sense. There's nothing grotesque. There's nothing There's adult. There's no sexual content or yeah, it's, crap like that. Yeah, it's a and lot. And I don't think it's that hard to catch on to. No. Um, for two to four players, that's 100% correct. Uh, it does have a crossbar on not having people that are zero to three years old. I, I understand that. There's no That's because little kids would eat the tokens of affection, yeah. not win them. Then you'd have no more tokens of affection. No. It says 20 minutes playing time. We definitely, that's why I asked you about that, because we definitely played longer than 20 minutes. Um, yeah, the more people you have, the longer I think the play, because you know what, like everybody, like four rounds, everybody gets a token of affection, yeah. and then, I mean, there's time, one round is probably about five, six minutes, oh. if not more. Uh, well, I think so. Mm -hmm. Well... And maybe because maybe because that was the first time we played it. I don't know. I don't think so. I think it would take just as long because, and plus, we you were... have to also consider, I mean, when you play games, <clears throat> whether they be card games or board games. You get more coffee. You want more coffee. Yes, please. And video games. I mean, you got to consider one thing that most people do. And if you don't do it, you're probably just lame. But most people do a lot of banter back yeah, and forth. Talking. Like Monopoly. Who in the world has ever played Monopoly and somebody didn't get pissed off and leave? Yeah. That has ha probably happened at least once. And anybody who's ever played Monopoly with their family, somebody's gotten pissed off and left the game. Yeah. Yeah, well, and... See, that's a good thing, too, about the game is there is talking, and, I mean, that's what makes a good board game anyways, or card game, or is having some interaction with the other players. 
You know, it wouldn't be fun if you didn't. Here, I'm just bringing the coffee back away and just let you stir that crap up. I'm being the waitress. Um, but yeah, I think I was going to say that too, and then you already grabbed that, is that part of the time being taken off is banter. Talking, yeah, which that's good. Shoe throwing, sledgehammers. Yeah, you know, there's guns, knives. There's, I mean, yeah. There's smack talk and there's little looks like, mm, you know. But Not a smack talk. Yeah. Um, the game, it. Uh, yes. Is there luck involved? Yes, there's luck involved. Is it deeply strategic? No. It's a light game, it's a light card game. That's fun. Is there any strategy at all? A little bit. How you play your cards. Yeah, how you play them. But, I mean, you could still have plain old bad luck and not get good cards. So, ends up being crappy for you. But, even if you get knocked out of a round, you're not out that long. No. And, uh, it's... It's not like Monopoly where when you're the losing guy, well, you know, say you have five people, you got one guy winning and then the other four losing, but, you know, you're not like that guy who's losing, losing. Who's like the one the with poorest. one property and has no money. Yeah, on like Baltic Avenue or whatever those cheap ones are. Mm -hmm. It's not like that where you're just like... If I leave the game, I'm a jerk. I'm an ass. But there's no point in sitting here and just losing deeper and deeper. It's not like that. I mean, yeah, you lost a round, whatever. In a couple minutes, boom, it's going to be a new round. It's, but the point is, it's very easy to learn this game and pick it up and play it. Love letter. Fun game, cheap. I'll tell you what, I looked it up. Here there's a premium edition. Bigger, thicker, chunkier cards and extra characters that are not in this one. And I'm like, hmm, I wouldn't mind having that premium edition. And in the premium edition, the tokens of affection the princess gives you are not little pink cubes. They're little pink hearts. Red hearts. Red hearts. What else? I was colorblind. Uh, I'm not really colorblind, guys. It's just I see things a little differently than some He sometimes. thinks my red bathing suit is orange. It's the orangest red I've ever seen. It's not orange. It's orange. It's not. That's orange. What's orange? That, People can't even see what no, the color you're talking, talking about. Do you have to go outside? Oh. Dogs got to go. Okay, pop. well, it was nice seeing you folks. Thanks, thanks for being on here, babe. You're welcome. Next, we need to talk about Arabian Nights, though. Yeah, we'll talk about Arabian Not Nights today, in but... detail another time. But yeah, it's only 12.29 of in standard time. But yeah, it is, it's a fun game. I'm glad I finally got off my rumpus and played it. It had been sitting on a stack of board games for a long time, and... We have many of those. Yeah. And finally, it was like, you know what? Enough's enough, damn it. Look at the instruction manual, Paul. So I did. But, uh, yeah, now I'm like, I read about this premium edition. I'm like, hmm. I don't want to play that. I'd like to have that thicker, sturdier cards. <coughs> New characters added to it. Just... You know, something to spice it up a little more. Uh, yeah, that intrigues me. Yeah, game called Love Letter, you know, for crying out loud. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to sit around and play Love Letter. You're damn right I'll sit around and play Love Letter. Because it's fun. Uh, but yeah, my wife was joking, saying, why do I want to play a game where I'm trying to get a princess to marry me? But... <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's fun. Um, I guess there's some expansions too, besides the premium edition. There are some expansions. I read about a card called the Assassin card. Uh, 
that is another thing in expansion, or maybe that's a premium edition. And it, I well, it assassinates somebody's ass somehow, but uh, also that one, from what I've seen in the picture, only has a zero power. So he's not close to the princess at all, but can assassinate other characters. So that's intriguing. But yeah, so now I'm like, mm, I'd like to get my hands on that premium edition. Um, but yeah, so that's for your consideration, guys. Now, traditionally, I am not a card player, okay? You know, the standard playing cards, you know, with your kings, queens, aces, and all that jazz. I, I don't play those card games. I'm ignorant to them. Don't really care for them. But this this game was yeah. nice and bite-sized enough to where it's like, yeah, I can handle, I can handle this. You know, I don't like sitting around trying to figure out all these other card games. I know a lot of you guys probably love them. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's just, it's not how I roll. That's all. Um, but yeah, I was looking at the love letter here. They came out with versions of it with basically the same game mechanics used in this game only for other themes. I, I saw a Batman one. Saw a Lord of the Rings one. Big surprise. You know, there's Lord of the Rings everything. Um, Adventure Time, I think it was. Archer. That cartoon, that grown-up cartoon, Archer, had one come out for that. Uh, they must not have came out in big numbers for, like, the Batman and the Hobbit one, because people are wanting big, big dollars for copies of those on Amazon. So, 500 must, bucks. Yeah, 500 bucks for the Lord of the Rings one, the Hobbit or whatever. Yep. Big dollars, and uh, obviously I'm not going to get that for that kind of dough, but lucked out on this one. I was just saying that I wouldn't mind having the premium edition, you know, it's got <laughs> extra cards, yeah, and the goose is getting fat or something. Yeah, well, I don't know about the goose, but I'm on my way. But, uh, yeah, who knows, maybe this open up a new interest in some of these themed card playing games. I've never played Magic Gathering. Uh, you know, I've done this show and had people, especially uh, Ricky Davlin, talk about Magic the Gathering. He's a big fan of that game. I've never played that one. Uh, but playing this little card game kind of uh, piqued my interest. I have another card game, which I tried learning on my own. Damn I couldn't figure it out. I'm going to have to give it another try. My wife spent a lot of money getting me a gift, and I got to keep trying at it until I figure the game out. It's a Big Trouble in Little China card game. All right? You ever seen that movie? Kurt Russell in it. Chinatown, San Francisco, fighting the forces of evil. Okay? All kinds of um, Chinese black magic and stuff involved in it. Good cult flick. Big Trouble in Little China. I've got to learn that game. And so I think uh, playing this little card game has piqued my interest to whip that game out again and try learning it again. Maybe <clears throat> if you have another person trying to learn it with you makes it easier. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Teresa, because, I mean, Teresa just suggested you went over the basic playing with somebody else. Arabian Nights, and then when me and Vinny yeah. started playing, oh, it Arabian became Nights a lot of fun, fun and very easy to learn. Yeah, maybe it would be easier to learn if I had somebody else trying to learn with me. Uh, and that's the thing. The Big Trouble in Little China card game. It's like crap is in the legendary card game universe. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them. There's a legendary Marvel game, legendary this, legendary that. There's a legendary alien game that I wouldn't mind having too, but I don't even know how to play my legendary Big Trouble in Little China. 
But I guess if you learn how to play one of them, then if you get another one, they're pretty easy to figure out. Okay. But the big step is learning how to play that first one. So my challenge is learning how to play Big Trouble in Old China, period. There's a bunch of cards to it, lots of cards. There's a rubber playing mat that folds out and has artwork on it. It's really cool, but i got to figure out how to play it. I wish I knew somebody who knew how to play it already. They could teach me, but I had to teach myself. What's funny about board games and... Uh, or card games that you get packaged is that, you know what, I'm going to refer to those as board games too, is that sometimes it takes several pages to explain very simple things that could be explained by somebody sitting next to you who knew the game, it could be explained in seconds, but when you're reading a book, I mean, you could invest... 10, 15 minutes of reading just to figure out some very simple stuff. Yeah, and that's instruction manuals for it. And <clears throat> some people have an aversion to instruction manuals altogether, right? A lot of us dudes do. I say a lot of us. I don't want to stereotype everybody, all the dudes out there. But a lot of us don't like instruction manuals. Now, I've lucked out that I am not one of them. I'm an exception to the rule. Yeah. But, I'll admit it. I <clears throat> hate instructions. I wanted See, 15 my wife hates minutes instructions. ago. I did not do well in, with instructions. Yeah, if you my ever wife, came to my house, you would see the things I put together. Yeah, my wife wings it instead. Now, with board games, you can't just wing it, of course, <laughs> or else you're playing a game and wondering why the hell where everything went wrong the second you started, you know. These board games nowadays are very, um, I don't want to say they're all complex, they're not all complex, but there's a lot of thought behind the mechanics behind a lot of these games. And they're made specifically for one purpose, one way of playing it. Okay, so when you don't read the instructions and don't play them right, you're not going to be happy because the game will not work. You know, I mean... That's just how it is, because they're, you know, I, can, I mean, the thought that had to be behind some of the games I've played is just the idea behind how much somebody was sitting, sitting back there working this shit out on paper and, and computers, trying to figure out these different algorithms and, and methods for how cards and dice and boards work together. It, it's just mind-boggling just thinking about it. Uh, so that's where the instruction booklets come in to explaining how to play the damn things. Yes, dear. But I'm sure I will learn Big Trouble in Little China, and after I learn it, I'll be like, why didn't I figure that out sooner or later? It makes sense. But yes, then again, maybe the instruction book is a little ambiguous, a little confusing, you know, because that's another thing. Well, it might have been because these games boil down to also learning them can boil down to how well the instruction booklet's written, you know, because if it's not wrote good going to confuse the hell out of you, and, and that's, I mean, that's just what it is, you're not going to know what the hell you're doing, because the book isn't real good, so you're constantly trying to figure out what the hell's going on, but uh, board games, it's funny, because there's something that I think a lot of people don't talk about much. I think a lot more people yes, have so. them I got it. than actually talk about them. Out today, okay? You know, I think most people have some kind of board game. Maybe they're the classics, uh, you know, you roll the dice, you move here thing. You know, I mean, most people have had a copy of Monopoly. But the cool thing about board games now is uh, we've got...
got way past Monopoly. Way past Monopoly. Way past Clue. Way past Aggravation. Or any of the other Parcheesi inspired games. You know. yeah, there's a lot of Parcheesi inspired games. You got Aggravation, what? Sorry? What? Sorry. The game what? Sorry is like. Oh. It, it's another one that's obviously inspired by Parcheesi. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole family of those ones. Uh, gone way past that stuff. Board gaming. Is deeper than ever, uh, and I really think I don't know. I wonder if more people are into it than admit it because they don't want to, you know, come off as a geek or a nerd. You know, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I don't give a shit. I'll talk about it. You know, but yeah, board games, and and the one that was really the gateway game for me that opened up really getting into these newer modern board games is Tales of the Arabian Nights and I really look forward to having a long show about that and we will do that in the future uh, going to have Teresa involved in that maybe some of the kids and I want to do that where I got the whole board laid out for you to where you guys can see it because um, it's a big board game big lots of pieces um, and if you're not if you're used to stuff like uh, clue and stuff like that looking at it could be kind of mind-boggling like oh my gosh but in the grand scheme of things that game is not as hard to learn as some of these other games I have a game another game that I have in a box that I still haven't learned to play called the others and I gotta learn how to play that. Oh, Thunderbirds! I learned how to play. And I want to crack that baby me. out. Oh, I'm wanting to crack that baby out now. I talked about Thunderbirds on the show before. That was one of the first board Keep games we talked about. Keep in mind, some here. of these games, whether you get them on eBay, Amazon, or uh, even Goodwill, you, they can run you anywhere from ten dollars to sixty. Oh it yeah. It depends. They yeah. have a new yeah, board games um, can like be expensive. Board game, card game, super version of Big Trouble in Little China, and I need to save money to get that for Paul. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's the actual board game. Yes, that unquote. one is ranging from 50 to to $100. Yeah, I mean, they can be expensive. But, if you read about them, if you study about them before you get them, if you watch video playthroughs, because damn near any new video video game, new board game out there is going to have videos on it. You can watch people play these doggone games. Oh, that can, can will give you an idea, idea if you want to play the damn game. Yeah? Oh, and about the prices of these games, don't deter that from getting the game you really want. No. One of the good things is, if no. you end up playing the game and learn it, and you enjoy it like Arabian Nights, yeah. you got your money's worth three times one. Yeah, that. Tales of the Arabian Nights is, uh, that game, I mean, there aren't too many of my video games that I wouldn't trade for that game if I had a choice. Oh, I keep this video game or keep this board game. I'm going to go with my board game, Arabian Nights, because it's just so fantastic. And I get excited just thinking about talking about it. So, I'm, you know, we're going to do, I am going to do a review of that game. So... Don't you worry about that. I'm going to do a review. I'm going to have the whole board laid out and you can see it. But uh, another game, I was on the subject of games I have that I haven't learned how to play yet. I have a game called The Others. Okay, I picked that game up for what it is. I picked it up cheap. How much was it? Which one? The Others. Um, 20 bucks or something? No, you got that. Uh, 10 bucks. $10? No, no, no. The others. I got it at the game store. It oh, was that was $20. Open. It was on sale. Okay. I got a game for 20 bucks that normally is over $60. Okay. And they're discontinuing it, too. Yeah. And this game 
is warp, dude, and doodads. It is sick. I mean, it's got miniature figures with it, and these guys are disgusting looking. I showed the box one time on a wasted lunch, but I still haven't learned that game the others. So if you guys watch that show, guess what? Still haven't learned the damn game. The instruction manual is over 40 pages long. Over 40 pages. Definitely the biggest, chunkiest, most involved just kind of game that I have and I still haven't learned it. I tried one night quite a few hours to learn by myself and one time with my son. I'm going to give it a try another time, but it's really hard to invest that kind of time trying to learn a board game when, uh, you know, time is precious to you and when you have kids, time is even more precious because you need to share your time with so many other people. You know, I have a lot of kids. I've got to share my time with them. And I'm fine with that. But what and that you know means what? is, what that days. means is, I'm not going to invest five hours or whatever just to learn a game when, you know, but one of one our of kids the best needs about to. board games, especially with large families. Yeah, you can go over there and play a video game. Yeah, you might want to come up here. They might not be able to hear you. You can play a video game with anybody. You know, there's two-player games. They can be a lot of fun. But when you play board games, there's more interaction. You're talking yeah. more. You're, you know, you're battling. You're being goofy. You're being silly. Right. You're passing around popcorn or chips. I mean, there's more involvement. Yeah. There's more... It, the board game helps personalize your family. Definitely. Whereas you guys have heard me talk about this subject. Most times, you got kids and tablets, phones, on video games, but once you bring out that board game, you know, hands down. If you say, hey, want to play video games or this board game, they'll choose the board game every time, especially if you do it even once a week. Yeah. Family game. Game night once a week. Yeah, family game night, guys. For real. Make your kids do it. And if you're the kind of um, 2018 parents who have let their kids get control of the situation to where they just always tabletify and phone and shit, take control of your damn house. Steal them shits from them. Make them sit down at the table. I'm telling you. You're like, well, why are you telling me this? I'm telling you because it's true. Just snatch that shit up. Stop them. Get control. Have a board game night. When I'm sitting down, it's and good. Try, it's good you shit. Know, and you know what? Yeah, tablets, we don't agree with the electronics as much. But yeah. in defense for other families and other parents, you're not schmucks because you bought your kid a No, I'm not saying tablet. you're a schmuck because no, you got a tablet for your kid. You um, might want to turn that off and get closer so people can hear what you're talking about. My, I'm doing I know, but they're probably hearing the water rushing and all that well, shit. Well, my thing of it is, sometimes those things come in handy. Say, you, you busted your ass, you cleaned your house all day. Oh, gosh, don't put me on there. And uh, you cleaned your house all day. Why well, I'm taking that. Go play with your tablet for now. There you go. You're doing bills. Yeah, I'm not you know? saying they don't have a place. I'm oh, just I'm saying, not saying that. I'm just saying. I'm talking about people who let their kids get out of control, turn into tablet Frankensteins. You know, those damn kids where, I mean, their shit breaks and they're crying and beside themselves and don't know what to do because they don't have a tablet or a smartphone anymore. That was our daughter. Yes, yeah, right. that was our daughter acting like that the other day, and I'm like, oh, hell no. We gotta stop this shit. We gotta stop her. She's turned into a damn monster with it. But what's funny is she will still want to board game. Yes. And so her, I think I think it helps when you get them young. Yeah, her when favorite you get games. Get them um, stuff when they're young, too. Uh, left, right, center. Yeah. Yes, if you watch my earlier shows, you heard me talk about how. We uh, ended up teaching my daughter the thrills of gambling by playing left, right, center. I talked about that, how her first time playing, she won $11. Yeah, great way to teach your kids how to gamble. Um, but 
Well, I'm going to teach her poker next week. I mean, come on, we got poker chips. I'll pass on the poker. You guys already heard my opinions on regular card games, but... Yeah, board game. Yeah, am I trying? Am I trying to convert people? You're damn right I am. Damn right. And you guys start playing some board games. Hop on here. Leave some comments. Let me know what kind of shit you guys play. Let me know what Even kind of you games you guys after the get show. into. Comment. Yeah, I think you can comment even after this is already recorded. Yes, you recorded. can. So you know, don't be afraid. Don't, don't hold back. Go ahead and comment. You know, put some stuff down there. Oh, I played this and that board game. I played whatever. You know, there's a very popular game out there. This would be like the, um, this would be like the Walmart of big board games um, that I have not played. Heard much buzz about it online and one of my nephews played it i have never played the damn game pandemic in fact i even remember seeing it in walmart a couple years ago pandemic never played it uh game about containing viruses and shit that are popping up all over the globe i guess you're part of uh, that's your uh, kids going to school yeah yeah keeping track of them all keeping them in place but pandemic hugely popular game of Somebody out there is watching this. I'm sure you guys play Pandemic. Tell me about it. I haven't played it. You know, share. Uh, like I said, the only person I've talked to in the flesh was my nephew who played the game. Other than that, I've read about the game, and it's very popular, you know. I've never heard of it. On the online board gaming uh, websites. Never heard of Pandemic? No, I have not. Yeah, it's... It looks, it looks fun, but you know what's funny about Pandemic is, I guess the same guy who designed Pandemic also designed my Thunderbirds game, and I guess they're very similar. <clears throat> you got shit popping up here and there, and trying to take care of all these problems, and my Thunderbirds game is another top dog game. In fact, yesterday I wanted to crack it out, but I only had half the kitchen table, and there were cups of stuff. You know what my wife was saying about you have snacks and chips and stuff around the board game? Yeah. My wife and the kids have snacks and chips and stuff around the board game while I'm sitting there worried about everything spilling like this. He has like a four spoon. <sighs> well, we you know. try to keep the drinks to a limit. And yeah. It depends on what we're playing, too. If we're playing to Arabian Nights, you got to walk six miles to get a drink of pop. Yeah. So yeah, I'm always worried about play, shit getting spilled on my board game. If you're games. thirsty, you better drink up before you walk to the table because... You know that... What my wife's talking about how, you know, I am, yeah, I am neurotic when it comes to board games and drinks and snacks and shit. Being on Nobody's going to disagree with that, Paul. Um, but I have been thinking for a while, I am going to design, because I made tables before. I made quite a few tables. And I thought, um, I have thought what would be the ultimate gaming table. I've been trying to think of that, you mm -hmm. know, design for a gaming table. And How about me, an island for the kitchen? My wife wants me to build an island for the kitchen. Okay. You are diverting the show. All right. I can't, <laughs> I can't allow that. All right. Now, you as a, a, a host or, or a guest guest uh, on the show is one thing, but she's trying to turn this into a crusade to get me to build an <laughs> island for the kitchen. But Two years. <sighs> asking... Two years. I will not buy anything I, you know wood I made because my, he's I a made master my wife all the things with wood. I made, you know, potato bin. A uh, beautiful coffee, coffee table. table. Um, signs. I mean. But, all right. I digress. Back to the gaming table. That is one idea that I have had creeping around in my head quite a few times. What would make the ultimate gaming table? An I island. No. <laughs> But what I do think would make an ultimate gaming table is one, lots of space. You gotta have room. You gotta have room for your board games. Um, soft top, I think, would be nice. So if you're playing with cards, you can pick them up easy. Yeah, this way it doesn't slide around either. Yeah. Maybe and a felt top? Right, that's what I was thinking, a felt top. Or maybe rubber? 
you know, that like soft that rubber that stuff that it slept on. Yeah, the the ones what that they you use know those for? little square card tables, and it's got like a leather and it's rubbery and it's soft. No, I'm gonna have. I'd like to see one of those so I can feel this material you're talking about. Okay. But what's up, Sean? Right now, I'm talking about uh, talking about uh, building the ultimate board gaming table. I think it would be you have to have a lot of space for your board game or cards or whatever you're going to play on it, and it would have to be uh, you know felt top or something to where. You know, you ever put cards on the table and they're next to impossible to pick up, and then you got to slide them to the edge of the table to pick them up? That's a pain in the ass, isn't it? Well, so some kind of a soft top, but also it would be nice to have somewhere you could put your drinks and put snacks to where if the shit dumped over, it wouldn't get all over your board game or your cards. So that's something I've been considering too. What would be a good way to pull that off? To have an area for snacks and chips and drinks. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I don't know if there'd be like a trough or something where you can put your snacks and chips or whatever. Really? A trough? Yeah, along the edge of the table. Oh, yeah. All, invite all your horse and pig yeah. friends to come over no, and eat. But... I don't know. What the hell is that? I'm saying if stuff spilled, it would go into that or whatever instead of all over your board game table. Well, how many barnyard friends are you inviting over? A trough. What do we look like? A bunch of animals? No. Oh, anyways, what's going on with you, Sean? Anything exciting? Have you played any board games, dude? Hey. You know what? We were talking about Risk. That's right, when we were camping. We were talking about Risk. You played Risk. You're a Risk guy. And funny about that is that's a classic. It's been around forever. And that's another game that yours truly I have not played. Um, see, Sean's saying it's a good idea. What I mean by trough is I don't mean something for people to eat out of, but I mean like a separate little part that's lower than the gaming area that you could put your stuff in, you know. Well, that's you what said I mean. trough, and I just see uh, six people in the family. Oh, let's take a break and get chips and just sticking our face yeah. in a trough to uh, get some yeah, Doritos. Got, yeah. Or... yeah, not not for that, not like a feedback thing. Let's see. Ooh, Sean played Scattergories last night. Damn. Oh, my gosh. I'd like to play Scattergories. I will not play with you. We don't have it, do we? Yes, we do. Where? In the closet. Oh, We've got three board... Four... No, five board games in the closet in the living room that we still haven't Really? Played. You know what you need we to build? we got five board games in my closet. Shelves. Oh, yeah. Damn for right. I got to build shelves for them. And you know what? Scattergories, dude. That's one of the games that, yeah, my wife won't play with me. Some people in the past have hated me over categories. He would be horrible to play with, uh, play, um, Scrap, and that's, yeah, Scrabble. Scrabble. Yes. I've never played Scrabble. Don't ever want to play Scott, with you. I haven't played Scrabble, but it'd probably be fun. But yeah, categories. oh my gosh, that game's so much damn fun. But that is a game that I have had a few people say they will not play with me again. And... I'm saying right now, it is not because I'm a sore loser or sore winner. I'm a, you know, I'm a good sport about things. You His know. vocabulary is larger than most. That's where people hate me when it comes to categories. He says shit that I have to go look up on the internet just so I seem intelligent. Yeah, I've had people argue with me thinking I was just... <laughs> You no, 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 I wasn't trying to agree with you 100% with what you said, but I was going to say that what happens is I've said, I've, I've said words in categories and I've had people look at me and argue with me that what I came up with was complete rubbish, bullshit, you know, that's not really this and that, and they... It's come down to where they had to pull out the dictionary and find out I was right, and then they were still pissed at me, even though they were the ones who got mad. Um, 
I don't know how the hell that works. You're going to be mad at me because I got a point, you know. But, yeah, that's why people have gotten mad with me. Um, it's not because I, like I said, I'm not a sore loser, not a sore winner. You know, other people win. Hey, good job. I don't care as long as I'm having fun. Don't get me wrong. I want to win. But if I don't win, if I had fun, then I'm cool, too. I can handle that. See, Adam's on here. What's up, Adam? Uh, talking a little board game talk right now. Sean played Scategories, and yeah, that's a damn good game. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we do have it still? Yes. We're going to have to pull that game out. That's why it's in the closet. Let's see, Sean's saying, yeah, a lot of my answers don't count. Why don't they count, dude? Are they wrong? Or are you getting people arguing with you to the point where, you know, or are you just having fun? Sometimes it's fun, too, to throw some crazy shit on there, on the old categories. That can be fun, too, just kind of hamming it up. I've done some of that, too. But uh, when I'm serious about them, I, you know, I will let everybody know. Uh, but I have thrown some stuff on there where I'm like, whoa, hold on here. What, what the hell fits here? And... I pulled that off, too, and just put something goofy in there, but when I read it off, I'm usually laughing, and that's when people know I'm joking, clearly. One time, I forget what it was, what the actual quest things, it, things places you go to get something or whatever, uh, and it, the letter was N, uh, and I wrote the neighbors. If you would have saw our neighbors back in 53rd, yeah. Well, I've told you about them. The guy's name was Bongo. Okay, just imagine. Name Bongo, guys. Yes, I just just imagine them, and they had kids named Riri and uh, all kinds. Of, and these were their names. These weren't even nicknames. That oh was gosh. the problem. That's weird. Uh, let's see. Sean answered. Uh, a lot of his answers don't count for excuses for being late. He put a bomb threat. That's pretty good. Well, yeah, for being late, a bomb threat. I don't know. Yeah, I got a bomb threat, so I was late. Well, you know what I mean. Shit. You were, you know. I could see how that could work out somehow. You know, some weird shit happens. Excuses for being late. Bomb threat. Nice. My wife was just... Oh my gosh, talking about her strange categories answers, but categories, yeah, I got, it's time for us to crack that baby out. Brought that game up too many times, dude. I'm going to have to play that. And you know what, after I play it, I'm going to try and write down some of the sillier stuff that comes up and talk about that on here. Cause, yeah, categories, that's a great game to get people talking to. And that's what it's all about, words. And to me, that's a damn good game when you got people talking, chatting it up. When it's more than a two-player game, especially. You want people interacting. You know, that's what makes it fun. Uh, you know, there are some two-player games that are fun as hell without a lot of interacting, like chess, you know. Let's see. Couldn't think of anything for B, so you had to get creative. Hey, man. Yeah. Bomb threat. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, but yeah, it's categories. You know what? Now that you put that up, that's part of the fun of categories too. Is sometimes the arguing. You know, as long as you don't have somebody who's a total asshole. You know, who games just to win. You know those people. You know that guy. The one who just wants to win. He's not fun to play with. Because he loses his shit over losing a game. You know, those people are best to be avoided anyways in almost all situations. You know, not even board games. I mean, just everywhere. They're usually best to just be avoided. But, when you're playing with some good sports, the arguing over categories can be fun too. 
You know, oh, come on! You know, when you give that crazy answer and you're like, well, for real, think it could be this and this and this happening, you know? And, yeah. You know, like you're saying, those guys are usually sore losers. Right. Usually that person who totally wants to friggin' win, the ultra-alpha competitor, usually they, a lot of the time they are sore losers, yeah. And not a hell of a lot of fun to play with. In, in a lot of games. Uh, but sometimes it is fun to see them get knocked off their high horses. And I say that, and, and you know what? I can not say that. I can honestly say that without feeling guilty about it because I am not like them. You know, um, I've played and I've lost. You know, I've lost some games where you know, but if I honestly lose a damn game, then shit, I lost. You know, I played chess games to where <clears throat> they were uh, so competitive to where it was just whoever made the first slip up was going to lose. And sometimes I was the guy who made that slip up and I lost. So it happens. You know, it's just, just like, you know, chess especially. It's like boxing. I mean, you got to. You got to keep up on your game with that, you know. Um, so you want to be careful about flexing your chesticles. You want to be in shape, and, and chess is like that. I mean, you got to be, uh, you got to be in shape for it. You literally have to be strong and fit and conditioned for chess. I mean, or else you're gonna lose against anybody halfway decent, but I played that game, and, you know, so many people consider that as some kind of a measure for intelligence or whatever. I don't necessarily feel like that, but I've lost at it. I've done my fair share of losing. See, checkers, Sean's bringing up checkers. Do I like checkers? You know what? I do like checkers. I will admit this right now, Sean. I have not played checkers for a long time. If I have played it within the last couple decades, it has been enough times to count on one of my hands, dude. Uh, but it's fun, and it wouldn't be a bad game to whip out and play because I haven't played that for a long time. Checkers. And, you know, You're a chore for the day. Oh, I got a chore, guys. Uh-oh. I got to put this weight. Oh, nice. I got to put this weight on my uh, spray thingy for my sink. Because, anyways, um, checkers. Yeah, you know what's funny about checkers is I believe that for years when I was a kid, I was not playing it correctly. Okay. One whole part of checkers and the strategy behind checkers was completely lost because I wasn't playing it right. And I believe this is... Now, you correct me if I'm wrong here, Sean. But if you are put in a position where you can jump somebody, you have to jump them, correct? You have to capture that piece. Am I right? Isn't that a rule? I think that is a rule that I didn't know about from a long time as a kid, that you actually have to jump that person and take their piece. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I'll get back to you on that rain thing. I'm waiting on your answer on that, Sean. Um, hey, hell, let's see, that happens for the longest time you're playing Risk wrong. Yeah. The rain, am I enjoying the rain? Yeah, actually I am. It's, it's kind of nice. I can't go swimming right now anyways. I haven't got my stitches out. So supposedly today is the day I can get my hand checked out to see if they can come out. Hopefully they're coming out today. I have a bad feeling that maybe they're not ready to come out. That's what stinks. Let's see. Um, oh, you're not sure about that roll on checkers? Somewhere in my vast library. And, you know, I'm saying that 
and I literally mean vast. At least I think for most most modern people, I have a vast library. I probably I don't know how many hundreds of books I have, but I've got a book about that thick, and it is a book. Here, let me try it with this hand. It's about that thick, and it is all about games. Okay, it's an old book. It was wrote in the 1930s, I think. And it has rules on, well, obviously classic games. At least they're classic now. But um, it has all those rules on that. Checkers, chess, uh, backgammon. All the shit that existed in the 30s or 20s, whenever this book was wrote. I mean, it covers all these different games. Um, let me check your, let's see, you are playing Risk wrong for a long time. Yeah, it stinks. But, you know, my, you, you live and you learn. Um, I, I, I'm on a, you haven't played checkers since elementary. Well, that's not bad for you because you're not too damn old, dude. You're a young guy. So that's not that long ago that you played checkers. But, uh, you know, I, I'm looking at these websites because I read a lot about board games. Hell, I probably read about them more than I play them most months. But um, I'll watch these videos and people will be playing them. And then uh, there will be comments after the videos. And a lot of these videos, there will be, you know, two dudes playing this board game and then there will be comments, well you did this and that wrong, this and that wrong and you know, some of these people playing there you know, seem like they really know what the hell they're doing and then there's people, well you forgot about this and that rule and this and that mechanism or whatever happens in the game and you find out they flubbed too so yeah we all make mistakes but that's all right. I mean, eventually, you know, you learn, and usually when you figure out that you've been making a mistake, usually once you figure out that mistake and you play it right the next time, usually that adds more uh, dimension and flavor to whatever game you're playing, you know. Because in the board game realm, it's not like video games where either you can or you cannot do something, you know. And I've played some board games, Sean, where i played them, figured them out, played them the right way. <clears throat> and sometimes things were so overwhelming in them, I came up with house rules and talked about the house rules with the people playing. Because I'm not, uh, um, I'm not some kind of overlord or something like that. But I've talked to people, just knocked over my vapor. I've talked to the people playing and said, hey guys, what do you think if we do this instead? Like uh, Legend of Dritz board game. It is a great game. It's fantastic. It's a dungeon crawler. It's lots of fun. You fight lots of beasts. There's lots of little miniature guys. Hell of a lot of fun. But due to the game being designed the way it is and the mechanisms that are in place and the way the machine moves with the game there can be lots of enemies it can become very overwhelming fast in Legend of Dritz board game it can become downright horrible so come up with house rules to kind of tame that down and sometimes we'll play it with the house rules, sometimes we will not. Sometimes if we want it to be brutal on us, we'll play it the way it is meant to be played and end up being so overwhelmed, we just get slaughtered in the game. Other times we will play house rules because we're tired of getting slaughtered. But, uh, so, yeah, you got that too, which is kind of playing against the rules sometimes when you come up with house rules but sometimes house rules make things better too because some of some of the games i've played if you play it 100 percent according to the rules it, it will get it will be what's the word discouraging you know you would just get stomped down so bad so many times 
you won't want to play the damn game again. Mm. So sometimes, sometimes it's good to break the rules uh, because you're supposed to be having fun when you play, anyways. Okay. You know, I'm all up for a challenge, but I don't want a challenge to the point where I'm just going to straight up and not want to play something ever again. I don't want that kind of challenge. I want to have fun. I don't want things to be too easy, though, either. But, anyways, uh, yeah. Hey. But, let's see what time it is. Oh, it's 1.16. Oh, my gosh. I've been on here for over an hour, guys. I'm about to hop off here. Let's see who's on here right now. It's still Sean. Sean, I'm going to hop off of here, dude, and anybody else who's watched... Well, thanks for watching, guys. I know I've went uh, totally geeked over board games today. Nothing new. I've done that before. Oh, wait. Let's see. You went to the movies last night, Sean. What did you see? What did you see? What what, what I was going to say, what film did you watch? What what flick did you watch, dude? Anything good? Oh, you're saying having it? Oh, see the delay, dude. Yeah. Now, oh, if you get on here tomorrow, dude, you know, maybe you talk some movies. Um, I haven't been to the movie theater. I was going to say for a long while, but that's not true. Let's see. A Quiet Place. That's what you watched. That was the title of the film. It was A Quiet Place. I haven't been keeping up on current Hollywood movies, if that is one. Uh, was the film any good? What genre would it fall under? Would it be a horror film or a dramatic? Or what was the movie about, Sean? You let me know. Let me see something here, Sean. Oh. Try to click on some stuff on here. Let me see something here, real quick. Uh, I'm trying to click on your thing here. Let me see something different here. I was trying to see if I could invite you on here. Let's see, buddy. Bring Sean on. Let's try this, Sean. Try adding you right now. You're seeing the thingamajig. Go ahead and, you know, choose to be added. Don't be shy, all right? I'm trying to add you to the show right now as we speak. I'm trying to add you right now. So if you see something pop up, dude, go ahead and click it. Hop on here. Don't be afraid. Don't be camera shy. Be easier just to chat about it than anything else. Be a guest. Um... If you can figure out how that shit works. I watched uh, watched a good classic there, Aliens. The second of the Alien movies. I watched that last night. That's, um, I have not seen all the Aliens movies. Uh-oh, it says you declined. You declined. What, are you not wanting to get online? My son's laughing over here and pointing at me. That, that's real nice. It is. Dude, you should have hopped on here. Let's see, you got science fiction horror, huh? Hold on, let you check your camera. All right, let me let me add you again. Let me try it again. I I'm guessing you have not hopped on this uh, Facebook Live thing before, huh? Uh, I push the add thing again. We're gonna try it again. Try and get you on here. Let's see, your picture thing is still up there. Let's see if we can figure this action out, dude. But yeah, watch Aliens. You know, the second Aliens movie. I have not watched all of the Aliens movies. I've watched the first three and didn't see the fourth one. Wasn't there a fifth one or something? But uh, Aliens, out of the ones I've seen, Love that movie. A um, lot of action. Very suspenseful. A um, lot of aliens in it. 
lot of alien fighting. You know, you got the space marines shooting up the aliens. Uh, James Cameron movie there. Very good movie. Um, uh, it says, it says no answer from video guests. You know what? That's all right. Because I need to get off of here. And uh, we'll try, try putting you on here. You know, maybe tomorrow if you hop on, I'll try and add you then. Uh, not a biggie right now because I got to get off here. Looks like I got to wait to put on my uh, uh, my little sprayer thing on my sink. This is to hold it in place. I got to put that baby on there. So, and I got to eat. I still got to eat. Huh? I think my wife's talking to my dog here. But, yeah. We'll try it again tomorrow. If you hop on here, I will try and invite you on, and we'll see how that works. All right, Sean? But I got to get off of here. I got to feed myself and all that good stuff. I and know. Then, it's you, and I'm feeding and your then work off. on this. But, all right. Thanks for watching, guys. And be cool. Be safe. Stay out of trouble. Have fun. And I'll see you later. Bye.